Hello lovely person watching this and welcome to my channel. I'm Anna and I kind of make mistakes in my life but with science. So today I am going to bleach my hair that everyone with a stable mind in this lockdown does. As I foreshadowed in previous videos, I am going to use this thing. But I am not like your average 20-something girl on YouTube because I kind of like a scientist in progress, so I decided to make it my mission to analyze every single ingredient that is in the stuff that I am going to use. And I will ruin my hair with it anyway, but like, at least I knew what molecules made did this to me. So my hair is totally prepared by not being washed, it's like as gross as it possibly can be, but I just wanted to make sure that I have my natural protective layers on my scalp. So as I said, I'm kind of like a scientist in progress. I'm not a chemist, I'm in biology. So I am learning to. A while ago in previous videos, I reviewed like um, a permanent hair dye that I failed to color my hair with. So this will be kind of similar to that. If you watch that, then you probably will find some of the chemicals that is here familiar because this is the same brand but also if you didn't watch it then don't worry as I said I'm like kind of learning this stuff and I'm learning with you all so I probably made a lot of mistakes and I'm going to probably redo those videos and anyway. so I'm even more excited about this project because before I colored my hair with permanent hair color so I cannot wait to see what kind of crazy colors will come out of this if I put bleach on it. Will my hair go green? Will my hair go purple? I have no idea. We will find out. So yeah, the first few impressions. This thing is not going to have color molecules in it because we are not intending to color the hair, we are intending to just get rid of the existing color in the hair. However, it does say that, um, uh, oh my god, I have to translate this, shiny blonde and anti-yellow effect. Now, I think that means that either we will find a color molecule in like the coloring cream or there will be color molecules in the conditioner cream that is included in the package. Also, another first first, like first second impression, this thing says um, oil powered lightener. Now I'm not sure if it's powered by oil, like some fires are powered by oil, but like this this reaction, probably not. Oil is instead, it's among the many, many fat and wax and oil-like molecules that are in there to protect your hair. So I expect to find some kind of fancy Latin plant names in there that are the oils. And another thing that this says with big, big letters to advertise itself is that it is um, doo -doo 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 -doo, no ammonia. Well, we will find out. I 100% expect this to smell like ammonia and we will see why is that. So in general, what will happen to my hair? An oxidation reaction will happen to my hair. Oxidation is kind of like burning. So it's like burning, but chemically and slower. Now, in case of hair bleaching, the bleaching molecules, hydrogen peroxide, will wreck the melanin molecules inside your hair, which are positioned in like granules, so like many of them are together and it completely disassembles them. So the hair color disappears. So the main thing here is molecules that can oxidate and everything else is inside there to either like boost this reaction, help it to get deeper inside the hair strand and some are also there to like protect your skin from the effects to cleanse your hair so they can get in it deeper etc. I think I will just start reading the ingredients and like then also start putting on my hair because I think nobody wants to look at my really really gross hair. So the package contained four different stuff, color cream, powder, conditioner and the developer. I think I will keep quickly go through the ingredients of the bleaching powder and then Mix it together and put it on my head, the moment we've been all waiting for. So this power is nicknamed like lightning activator and that's what it actually is. The reason why I'm reading it first because it only has three ingredients and those three ingredients are potassium persulfate. It's a very powerful oxidant. It's included in the product so that it helps to boost the oxidation reaction. It's the most common ingredient of its kind in bleaches. Then the second ingredient is silica, which is like glass sand. Silica has some interesting properties that make it useful in bleaches. It can absorb. When the oxidation is going on, there are all kinds of like secondary oxidation products. 
silica helps to absorb those so they don't bother and will end more in there. And the third ingredient of potassium sulfate. What does it do? I'm not sure. It could be listed because when potassium persulfate is dissolved in water, then potassium sulfate forms. So while it is not directly in there, as soon as you mix the other stuff that is in the box, then you will get potassium sulfate. So the function of the bleaching powder is to boost the bleaching effect. And silica acts as an absorbent of byproducts of the oxidation. Now the reason why it is packaged as a powder separately, I kind of think that it is because potassium persulfate would not be safe to be stored in a watery solution. I'm gonna go mix it all together, put it on my head so my hair stops being disgusting and will become even more disgusting. Uh, yeah, back in a sec. Okay, I am back and finally I look just as stupid on the outside as I am on the inside. Uh, this is already burning my scalp, so I better be quick. First ingredient is aqua, which is water. I guess that's not surprising, it does not need more explanation. The next ingredient is ethanolamine. Now, I think I kind of got it wrong last time when I reviewed the permanent hair dye and the semi-permanent hair dye, but maybe I didn't, maybe it's used for multiple purposes. Now, in case of this hair dye, ethanolamine is used for the purpose of replacing ammonia, because as I showed you, this product advertised itself as no ammonia, but we have ethanolamine, which it's kind of similar if you look at it, and it actually does smell similar. It was not such a bad smell, it was unbearable, but it did smell. The next thing is a soap-like molecule, sodium laurel sulfate. Oh my god. Sodium laurel sulfate is in there because it has cleansing properties just like soap. So I was okay with letting my hair getting extremely, extremely greasy before I put on this product because there is sodium laurel sulfate in it anyway and that removes all the grease and dirt. My scalp is kind of more protected from all the damage that is going to happen here and I can feel it happening because it's really hot. I don't know if you can see my face getting... I mean in like normal person scale it's never red, it's always like plain white. Now sodium laurel sulfate might include the freeze in your hair because the molecule itself is charged and it is the electric charge that makes your hair freeze. Other similar molecules are included in the product to reduce this effect and these molecules I put under the next category. These molecules can be described as the pet life stuff. So these stuff are included in the product so they help thicken the product, somewhat protect your hair and restore it after all the damage, some help it to foam better and they also provide a soothing feeling for the skin too. So these molecules are cityaryl alcohol, isopropyl myristate, coconut alcohol and cityar 20. Don't let the alcohol in the name of these molecules fool you, these do not behave like the alcohol that you drink, that's just one of the many many types of alcohol that exist. These are fatty alcohols, they kind of behave more like fats. Now we have two molecules in here that actually behave kind of similar to the previous ones despite looking very different. The first one is this CTRL amodimeticone. If you are more informed about hair products, you will know that everything that ends in cone is probably some kind of a silicone containing molecule. And these have kind of like a mixed reputation. Some people swear by it, but some say that it's not good because they form like a layer, like a film on top of your hair and that it's really hard to get off. Now I think I would like to make a whole other video about this entire story, I did not look into it too deeply. I did find out that the amodimethicones are kind of better than the like regular silicones because they repel each other and they do not form such a thick layer and can be washed off more easily. And the other molecule like this is sodium silicate, also known as water glass. In hair dye it's just used as an emulsifying agent. Now I told you that there are a lot of oil and fat-like molecules in this product. Fats and water do not like to mix usually, so emulsifiers have to be used to help it mix together. And then we have ethydronic acid, which is a chelator. Chelator means that this molecule can bind to capture metal ions. They could interfere with the reaction and the chelator is a molecule that can catch it. And then we have another thing there, perfume. 
I briefly talked about it previously, I think it kind of deserves its own video too, but perfume is what it is, perfume, it's not a molecule, you don't know what is in there exactly, which is a problem because a lot of the times many molecules are very allergenic. The perfume mix is probably here included to mask the smell of the ammonia-like ethanolamine. Oh no. So, let's just go to the developer. Now, the developer contains a lot of the same stuff, so I will not describe them again. It contains aqua, which is water again. Then the second ingredient in the list is hydrogen peroxide, which is like the most important ingredient in here, because this is the molecule that can oxidize. So this will do the thing and everyone else is in there to either protect your hair or either have the reaction to go, for example, provide the right pH, the alkylic pH. And then we also have a bunch of fat-like molecules in there, just like in the hair color cream. Some might sound familiar, like isopropyl myristate, CTR with alcohol, CTRS20, and an interesting, another one like this, EEG40 castor oil. This is not just simply castor oil right out of the plant, this is castor oil that was treated with polyethylene glycol. And this thing also has cleansing and emulsifying properties, kind of like somewhere between fat-like and soap-like in behavior. And then we have another interesting one, Spira Alba which is actually beeswax. Then we have in there sodium cetyl sulfate, which is very similar to sodium laureus sulfate and also behaves very similarly. And the last one here is 26, I cannot pronounce it, 26 dicarboxy pyridine. This molecule is also a chelator, just like ethydronic acid. Interestingly, I found that it is also found in bacterial spores. <laughs> and it helps the bacteria to be heat resistant. This does not mean that there is bacteria in the product, of course. So maybe it has something to do with heat resistance, I'm not sure, but it's probably also a chelator. So yeah, that was it. I cannot wait to wash off my hair and reveal my transformation. <laughs> I want to see. My son is very excited. okay half of it is kind of orange half of it is kind of yellow but i do not mind it will be good for the purpose i want to have this hairstyle for which is i can oops don't go away baby come back so next time i can finally dye it pink and look just like my son and we can finally look like family and also i can make a video on the differences between a permanent hair dye and a semi-permanent hair dye which is what the pink will be. So I really hope you enjoy this video and I hate saying this, this is so awkward. Like, comment and subscribe. Bye bye.